Today, I'm going to talk about bioanalytical method development for lipids in LNP formulations by LCMSMS. I'll briefly introduce you to the topic of the presentation and we'll discuss in detail on the workflow associated with the development of an LCMSMS method, followed by sample prep methods and optimization. I'll then talk about how to make sure that the method is robust prior to non-GLP testing, what we call as a method qualification. I'll also present a case study and brief you on the mass spec services that are that are offered at base. Um, so coming to the introduction, why are bioanalytical methods required? Bioanalytical methods help the sponsor understand the behavior of a drug or excipient in vivo right from when it gets absorbed until it gets eliminated. As a result, the sponsors are required to perform pharmacokinetic or toxicokinetic evaluation during preclinical or clinical and toxicological studies respectively. The sponsor here means a company. Methods vary based on uh, the tissue or fluid being analyzed, and a suitable method needs to be developed for quantitation of drug or, ex or novel excipients. As you can see from the figure describing life cycle of a product here, method development and validation play a key role in sample analysis, either GLP or non-GLP, which in turn is used to prepare pharmacokinetic or toxicokinetic reports for filing IND or NDA applications to FDA. Here are some, of, some additional details about bioanalytical methods. They are developed usually on triple quadrupole LCMS instruments where the LC can be an HPLC or a UPLC. They require reference standards for native analytes for preparation of calibration standards and QCs. Label in internal standards, especially C13 label and label standards are usually preferred and used for quantitation as they correct any variations produced in the native analyte responses. Compounds with similar structure as the analyte can also be used as internal standards, but they are less reliable. Standards and QCs are prepared using the same matrix as the samples. In some cases, FDA allows use of surrogate matrix as uh, long as the sponsor justifies the use. Good sensitivity is a prime requirement and is mainly dependent on the ionization efficiency of the analyte. However, by optimizing sample preparation and LC method, low nanogram to picogram per ml um, sensitivities can be achieved using LC MSMS or multiple reaction monitoring or MRM approaches. The quantitation method criteria is adapted from the most recent bioanalytical uh, guidance document published by FDA in May 2018. Single or multiple reaction monitoring abbreviation abbreviated as SRM or MRM or parallel reaction monitoring abbreviated as PRM are the available approaches for quantitation with MRM being more commonly used. While MRM data is acquired using triple quadrupole instruments or quadrupoles in tandem with linear ion traps, also known as Q-traps, PRM data is acquired using quadrupole in tandem with an orbit trap mass analyzer. Electrospray ionization or ESI source is more commonly used and atmospheric pressure chemical ionization probes or APCI probes are also used for analytes that may not ionize well under ESI. Example of a triple quadrupole or Q-trap instruments, IX, uh, Q-trap 6500, um, and an instrument with quadrupole in tandem with orbit trap mass analyzers, q Exacto Plus, are shown on the right-hand side. MRM scans for one or more precursor to product transitions, and PRM acquires all product ions for each precursor. The first quadrupole, as you can see from the figure on the left side, filters all ions with M over Z values outside a narrow mass window of a precursor ion. The second quadrupole or a collision cell fragments the precursor with the help of an inert gas such as argon. And until this point, the mechanism between uh, the PRM and uh, uh, MRM is quite similar. The third quadrupole on a triple quadrupole instrument focuses on specified product ion or ions and neutralizes all the other ions outside a certain mass window. In case of PRM, the product ions are sent to Arbitrap mass analyzer, which acquires data for all the product ions. In this presentation, I'll be mainly focusing on MRM uh, method development. And since MRM methods have the, uh, have the mass spec focus on a specific precursor to product transition, they are highly sensitive. Lipid nanoparticles are primarily used to deliver oligonucleotides such as mRNA, siRNA, or DNA plasmids. They usually consist of a monolayer lipid shell and an internal core uh, with reverse micelles. Now let's talk a little bit about the different types of lipids used in an LNP formulation. Firstly, cationic lipids are used to encapsulate the cargo oligonucleotides and they form the internal core with reverse micelles. 
They are ionizable under acidic conditions and are preferred as opposed to lipids with quaternary amines as they are relatively, le relatively less cytotoxic. Neutral phospholipids, on the other hand, contribute towards the integrity of the outer membrane and the charge can be altered, which in turn ch uh, changes the surface charge. Non-ionic lipids, such as pegylated lipids and sterols, also form the outer membrane of the LMPs. Pegylated lipids help minimize aggregation and increase the LMP time in blood. They also aid in solubility due to the hydrophilic peg chains. Sterols, on the other hand, help in maintaining the integrity of the LMP. Cholesterol is widely used in LMP formulations and oxidized forms or beta-cytosterol help improving the mRNA delivery significantly. The composition of all these different lipids dictate the LMP stability and the efficacy of uh, the cargo. Novel lipids uh, require tissue and fluid specific quantitation. I'll briefly go over the workflow for LCMS, MS, or MRM method development. Although the primary focus of this presentation will be on lipids, most of the steps that I'll be discussing here can be adapted to uh, other small molecules and peptides as well. First and foremost, the mass spec needs to be tuned in order to obtain optimal ionization and fragmentation. Tuning will also be uh, will also provide us the MRM transitions for the lipids. A tuning solution is prepared with one or more lipids and corresponding internal standards typically at 500 nanogram per mil or one microgram per mil concentrations. The solution is then infused, combining with the LC flow. Uh, collect the precursor and ion transitions and optimize the source and compound parameters. Moving on, LC method optimization involves screening columns with different stationary phase chemistries and various mobile phase combinations and compositions. Bioanalytical methods are usually quick and have uh, under 10 minute run times, but the runtime may vary depending on the number of analytes that need to be analyzed. Gradient opt optimization is performed once the mobile phases are locked. A baseline separation between each analyte is not exactly needed. However, um, overlapping peaks may suffer from ion suppression at the source level and also may saturate the detector, especially at high concentrations. Shallow gradients producing baseline separation may have wider peaks, which may affect the method sensitivity. So optimize the method, keeping these issues in mind. Develop a quick desalting method if only one analyte needs to be analyzed. Next step is to determine method dynamic range. Method sensitivity or lower limit of quantitation is estimated in this step by focusing on the signal to noise ratio of a sample using known concentration. Next, the calibration range is established using standards prepared without uh, any matrix components. Concentration of the upper limit of quantitation is generally around 100 times of the LLOQ or the lower limit of quantitation. A linear response from the calibration standards is preferred, although quadratic regressions may, are acceptable if the detector saturation is observed at high concentrations. Each of these steps mentioned here are discussed in greater detail in the subsequent slides. Now let's discuss in detail about tuning. The first step of tuning involves acquiring full scan data, which provides the M over Z values of the precursor ions for each analyte. An example of how the full scan data looks like is shown on the right-hand side figure. About 500 nanograms per mil of a phosphoridylcholine lipid and 1000 nanograms per mil of pegylated lipid and corresponding internal standards are infused using a syringe pump. Using a T connection as shown in the figure on the bottom left, the infusion flow is combined with the flow up from the LC at 0.3 mils per minute. Mobile phase composition is typically selected according to the composition at which the analytes elute. If an LC method reference is not readily available, use 80% ACN or methanol with 0.1% formic acid as a starting point. From the full scan data, we could see the doubly charged and triply charged pegylated lipid ions in the form of ammonium addicts. Each pegylated lipid ion has an adjacent internal standard ion, which can be seen in a lower intensity compared to the native lipid. Highlighted in green are the native and internal standard ions for the singly charged phosphoridylcholine lipid. Next step is to optimize the source parameters to obtain reasonable ionization for the native analytes. Use the best conditions for the lipid that shows uh, the lowest response at the same concentration. Different vendors have different terminologies for the source parameters. 
The terminologies for the same parameter com comparing two different vendors, SAX and Waters, are shown on the top left portion of the slide. Optimize the capillary or spray voltage. Too high of a voltage might produce higher noise. The gas pressures, uh, namely the curtain gas located at the curtain plate or cone, heater gas and desolvation gases must be optimized. Too high of a gas uh, pressure might prevent adequate ions from entering into the Q1 or the first quarter pool. Optimized temperature of the desolvation gas and the cone voltage or declustering potential. Too high voltage may generate unfavorable in-source fragments. Similar source parameters can also be found on an orbit wrap instrument from Thermo. The terminology may vary slightly. From the pegylated lipid ions that we see here, a few ions from the triply charged ions were picked for the next step, which is fragmentation. Alternatively, an in-source fragment can also be generated from the polydispersed pegylipid using high cone voltage. In case of the phosphodiedylcholine, the single charged precursor was selected for fragmentation. In order to identify the most intense fragment ions, the MSMS data is acquired for each precursor while continuing to infuse the lipids. MSMS data shown in the figure here is acquired by specifying the MOSZ value of uh, phosphodiedylcholine precursor and fragmenting the precursor at different collision voltages, also known as collision energy. A progressive increase in collision energy will start increasing the response of the fragments with lower MOSZ values. Record two to three fragment ion MOSZ values with the highest response. Avoid fragment ions with less than 100 MOSZ as they usually show higher noise in the MRM data. In case of pegylated lipids, for example, precursor ions with more than two charge states may have fragments with a higher MOSZ value than the precursor itself, especially if they are singly charged. Make sure to adjust your scanning MOSZ window appropriately so any fragment ions of interest will not be missed. Once the precursor and product ions are recorded, next tune for the compound parameters, mainly the collision energy and cone voltage. In case of SIAX instruments, tune for collision cell exit potential as well. The voltages are ramped or adjusted in increments to obtain the best voltage conditions for the precursor and the product ions, as seen in this figure with signal response on the y-axis and the MOSZ values on the x-axis. Select the product ion which provides the best intensity. Labs also use a qualifier ion, which is essentially a second transition for the same analyte, but with a different product ion. Once we finalize the MRM parameters along with the transitions, we can next move to LC optimization. For the LC optimization, screen at least two different columns with different chemistries, for example, a C18 and a C8 in this case. UPLC columns will help shorten the runtimes further. Short columns with narrow IDs are typically used for bioanalytical methods. Um, 2.1 millimeter or 1 millimeter internal diameter and 50 millimeter length are usually the preferred dimensions. In case of lipids, methanol or IPA work well as strong organic modifiers and AC and water mobile phase combination can be used as weaker mobile phase combination. Additives such as ammonium formate or ammonium acetate can be used to improve ionization of uh, certain lipids. Prepare a high concentration sample roughly containing about 500 nanograms per mil of analytes to optimize the method. As mentioned earlier, um, optimize the gradient and flow rates to achieve reasonable separation and sharp, sharp peaks. Also evaluate a carryover. If the carryover for analyte uh, is significant, comparing the response of the solvent blank injected right after the upper limit of quantitation. Optimize the needle wash to bring uh, the carryover less than 10% of the LLOQ. Also, a quick set of calibration standards can be prepared uh, with, uh, without any matrix components to assess the linearity and method sensitivity. The concentration of the internal standard can be about five to 10 times of the LLOQ concentration, and the concentration is kept constant across all the standards and QCs. The chromatogram shown in this slide for pegylated and phosphodiedylcholine lipids have more than 100 signal to noise ratios. We typically target the LLOQ to have a signal to noise of at least 20, and considering this data, a 5x lower concentrated sample can be prepared and tested as an LLOQ. 
Next, we will discuss about another critical aspect of method development, which is sample preparation optimization. There are a variety of techniques available for sample preparation and the top three techniques highlighted on the left will be discussed in detail in today's talk. Protein precipitation is a common sample prep method and eliminates most of these most of the proteins which are one of the primary causes of uh, interference. It can be applied to most of the biofluids and tissue homogeneous extractions. In order to optimize the sample prep, spike in a known amount of lipid or lipid combination with one level close to the LLOQ and another close to the upper limit of quantitation. Extract using different organic solvents such as ACN, methanol, IPA, and other, their combinations. Extraction procedure involves vertexing for about 10 minutes using a batch vertexer if there are a lot of samples. Optimize the biofluid or homogenate to organic solvent ratio, start with one to three ratio and increase based on the results. Homogenization is performed using a handheld blender or a batch blender. Optimize the tissue to solvent ratio for homogenization. Water uh, buffers or organic solvents can be used um, for this purpose. Once the samples are vertexed or extracted, spin them down and transfer the supernatant to well plates, uh, either 96 or 384 well plates. Add equal amounts of water or higher, and this improves the peak shape significantly. Extraction efficiency can be calculated by comparing the analyte response to the same amount of lipid spiked into a blank extract. This will show how much of lip uh, lipid is lost during the process of extraction. Additionally, the response of a matrix-free sample with the same concentration can be used to assess the matrix effect. We have seen improvement in extraction efficiency using low amounts of ionic surfactants, so this can be considered during the sample preparation. Adding acid to plasma improves the stability of cationic lipids. In order to preserve the stability of cationic lipids, it is recommended to store the samples under uh, nitrogen. Verify if there is a significant difference between prepping the samples in glass versus plastic containers, um, and even the well plates are not exception to this. Liquid-liquid extract extraction is similar to plasma precipitation, except the solvent used for extraction is usually immiscible with the biofluid or the homogenate. Spike in known amount of lipid at low and high levels, as discussed previously, into the biofluid or homogenate. Add an immiscible solvent, such as chloroform or ethyl acetate. Phase separation is dependent on the solvent density. In case of chloroform, the bottom layer will be of interest, as shown in the figure. Perform extraction by vertexing for 10 minutes. Carefully discard the upper layer and transfer the bottom layer into the well plate. In order to improve peak shape, Concentrate the sample and reconstitute in 50-50 water organic solvent combination. Extraction efficiency can be evaluated in the same manner as uh, what we have discussed during protein precipitation by comparing the response of the pre-spike sample to a sample prepared by spiking lipid to a blank extract to achieve the fi same final concentration as the pre-spike sample. Solid phase separation is another commonly used sample preparation technique. Sample preparation is performed using cartridges packed with the stationary phase. The technique is time consuming yet eliminates most of the matrix interference. The cartridges are usually are usually conditioned uh, using a loading buffer initially. The sample is then loaded followed by a wash step using a wash buffer to wash the interfering analytes off of the column. Later, an elution buffer is used to collect the analytes of interest. The wash or elution buffer conditions may have to be optimized, which includes collection of multiple fractions and analyzing each fraction to identify the column volumes required for wash or elution buffer for optimal separation. Finally, before starting non-GLP sample analysis, a method qualification is performed to ensure that the method is robust. At this stage, the mass spec can be retuned and source parameters can be optimized further Alternatively, a sequence with small modifications in the parameters can be set up with modifying only one parameter per injection. Run multiple accuracy and precision tests to ensure that the method performs in a robust manner. Also verify operator to operator robustness. Play 
uh, pay close attention to any shifts in the retention times and pressure fluctuations. It is good practice to have an inline filter followed by guard column in front of the column, and this improves the column lifetime significantly. Make sure that there is no significant interference in the double blank and internal standard containing blank samples for the analytes as shown in the figure here. If significant interference is observed, switch from unit mass resolution to high mass resolution, which also comes with the downside of losing uh, the sensitivity to, to some extent. Standards and QCs are prepared by spiking in known amounts of lipids in the matrix followed by extracting using internal standard containing extraction solvent or solid phase extraction. The recovery limits for standards and QCs shown here are directly adapted from FDA's bioanalytical method validation guidance document. In addition to accuracy and precision, also perform limited stability evaluation, including bench top, auto, stamp, auto sampler, and freeze thaw stabilities as ensuring sample stability during pre preparation while the samples are sitting in the auto sampler and while undergoing harsh freeze thaw may affect the accuracy of the quantitation. Test samples are typically extracted using internal standard containing extraction solvent. In case the sample concentrations are outside the calibration range, dilute the test samples using the matrix and test them. An exemplary sequence for test sample analysis is shown on the right-hand side table. The test sample concentrations are reported as nanogram or microgram or mic per mil or in molar concentrations. In case of tissues, the sample concentrations are reported as nanogram or microgram or mic per gram of tissues. The dilution undergone by test samples during homogenization or any additional dilution applied to accurately quantify the test samples is factored in for calculating the nanogram per gram concentration of the lipids. Homogenization factor is applied by assuming one gram of the tissue equals to one mil in volume. For example, if one gram of tissue is homogenized using nine mils of solvent, a 10x homogenization factor can be applied. Now I'll present a case study showing the data for a bioanalytical method that was developed in-house for quantitation of a cationic lipid a pegylated lipid and a phosphatidylcholine lipid combination in human whole blood. As shown in the top figure, a seven minute HPLC MSMS or HPLC MRM method was developed using a C18 column with a sharp gradient. The data shown here is acquired on a Zevo TQS micro tandem quadrupole instrument coupled to an I class UPLC. Standards and QCs were prepared by protein precipitation using five parts of IPA as an extraction solvent for one part of whole blood. And water was added eventually to the extracted sample supernatants to improve peak shape as we discussed earlier. The deuterated internal standards for each lipid can also be seen in the chromatogram with D19 pegylated lipid eluting slightly later than the native lipid. This is likely due to the slightly higher hydrophobicity exhibited by the deuterium labeling. And it's specifically seen when the deuterium atoms are five or more. An excellent dynamic range is achieved with the upper limit of quantitation being 500 times higher than the lower limit of quantitation, as you can see in the first table. The second table consists of the integration parameters. Typically, smoothing is applied to obtain um, reasonable peak shape. In this case, we have used linear regression and in order to improve the recoveries of the low level standards, one over X square weighting has been applied. This is how the calibration results look like for the three lipids. The curves are plotted using the response ratio of the analyte to the internal standard on the y-axis and concentrations on the uh, x-axis. As you can see from the recovery graphs beneath the calibration curves, the percentage deviation or the recovery accuracy is within 15% of the nominal for all standards and QCs, including the LLOQ with uh, such a wide calibration window. An excellent method precision was also achieved. Here are some metrics from the process data. No outliers were identified across all the standards and QCs. Shown on the right is the internal standard response deviation across the sequence. These matrices simplify troubleshooting any issues that one may come across during the data analysis. In summary, the primary target for bioanalytical methods is to achieve good method sensitivity. Upgrading HPLC methods to UPLC methods may help achieve that with 1.7 micron particle sizes 
and using one millimeter column IDs may help in decreasing the radial diffusion and improve sensitivity further. Now, when this is combined with the solid phase extraction, most of the interference is also eliminated, producing even better sensitivity. In addition to good method sensitivity, a robust method is also needed. A robust sample prep preparation method, labeled internal standards, a good dynamic range with linear calibration, and ultimately a well-maintained instrument are crucial for achieving a robust method. Pay close attention to the metrics, as I mentioned before, during data analysis. Also, make sure to keep an eye on the appearance of the samples during analysis and troubleshoot if any perspirates are, uh, are observed. Quality time spent on developing a robust method will ensure a smooth method validation and GLP sample testing. We'll likely follow up with a webinar on bioanalytical method validation, so stay tuned. I would like to now take some time to discuss about the instrumentation and capabilities at PACE. Uh, in terms of instrumentation, we have SciX 4500 QTRAP Plus and Waters Zero TQS micro low resolution instruments. We develop bioanalytical methods for small molecules, peptides, lipids, etc. We also validate the methods under GLP and can also perform non GLP or GLP sample testing. Our expertise is not limited to bioanalysis. We also develop cleaning validation methods and validate them, can perform mRNA cap analysis, cholesterol oxidation product analysis, determine half-life of drugs or novel excipients, and perform uh, metabolic quantitation as well. In terms of the high-resolution mass spec instrumentation, we have a Thermo q Active plus Orbitrap and a Waters Zevo g 2 xs QTOF. We routinely characterize proteins, oligonucleotides, small molecule impurities, and metabolites. Additionally, we also perform host cell protein analysis.